I'm, 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 essentially, yeah, I don't, oh, a couple of things Carl just pointed out is that I haven't spent the time trying to format this yet. Okay. But just to, as a note, this is nice. You can format that nicely so it doesn't look like this. The other thing I wanted to point out, because it, it's the kind of thing that if you're teaching a class, um, it really is scary. And so you do X and do Y. So I want to create a conservative, keep on you know, updating as I go. I want a conservative vector field. Now I look at that and I'm seeing 48 divided by pi. What's wrong? Do you right now? Conservative vector field? Yeah. No. I mean, it is. if you're taking the integral, should it be zero? Yes. Yeah. What's wrong? Sure. And you're, Somewhere you, you switch branches on something. You ready? You oh. ready? You ready? Uh, Click. Uh, oh. If you forget, it, it doesn't update until oh, you go right. somewhere else. Oh. It waits for the text field change. Right. Yes. Change. And it's like one of those things that says nothing. Oh, but if so, you don't know it, and you think you've got it all in there, oh. and you're thinking, I've got it programmed. So they're not fit to keep. Wait, so, yes, so yes, what's okay. what we need to do? What we need to do is. It's not, it's, not, it's not incorrect, is it? No, but yeah. what we yeah. need to do is in the JavaScript, as really? soon as there's actually a change, yeah, or the auto update, this is something we should do for auto update too. So anytime, and you know, just, just trigger on a key press, anytime there's a key press, put a little red bar out to the side, which is sort of our convention for the cell is out of date, oh, the good. output is out of date. That's an indication that whatever you have up there is not consistent with what is up here. And right now the auto update stuff as well, when you click that update button, anytime you change your control, it actually deletes the output, which right. is like incredibly unuseful and oh, helpful. Yes. Yeah. Is, that yeah. why is, is that why there's two clicks then? It might have something to do with it, I don't know. Well, but, uh, yes. but we should it's leave the output there out. and then just well, have a red, Yes, another ticket. Carl, do you have not drawn all these ones? Okay, I'll put that one in. Let's see. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, you're, uh, you're Travis on track, right? Yeah, I am. I, see you. I, I am see actually. You. Yes. Okay. And I, I, I was, I was proud to put my first ticket in. It's eleven five zero zero. So it's a right. nice uh, number, you know. Um, I stole this from somewhere, and just as a little add-on, if you don't like John, uh, John stuff. Then you have other ways of viewing things, and of course, this is not appearing all on the same screen at once. There you go. Well, that's a little too much. Oh, that's a ray tracer. But you can, uh, I guess this is a ray tracer, right? Um, and you can't do as much interactivity with it here. Just generates a PNG. The Java 3D is here, and I, I've always, every time I click on this, it doesn't work for me, but maybe it works here. It's totally out of date. Nobody's ever. Oh, okay. It's all it's all all for that. Here's a wireframe. Which actually lets you interact with it. I don't yeah, know why that chose the other. Oh, the iPad. Yeah, this, that, this, that, this, is, this is where I stole the uh, color picker. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay, there we go. There's a live jar. There's a live jar. There's no question you have to do it. It's not a mistake. It's a white jacket. It generates a PNG. So it's a very realistic job. I knew the flash. That's terribly small, but. To end things up here, um, plans for next time is um, oh, this this is the Carl Dieter approach to have a say a sage worksheet for all class meetings, all 42 of them lined up. That's that's pretty cool. Um, yes, and to have um, yeah whatever. Um, some features I like to have is shading 3D volumes. Slicing 3D volumes, animating 3D volumes, and being able to save the final state of the graph. So when you, the student saves the sheet, you see what they saw. I right, guess that's it. Right. Any, final, any final questions or comments? Yeah. It is not a question for John so much as for the Sage developers. Since when is function notation accepted as in? A way to define a function in Sage. <coughs> it didn't used to be that way, did it? Um, True. No. I don't know. Maybe like for three years time. ago. Last year for prep, we made sure we put it in. It was like in May, right before the prep workshop. We uh, like worked really hard to get it in there. Wait. Oh well. So so for three D so functions. So for two D function. For. Well, are you talking about well, just like f of x, y, y equals? F of x. F yeah. Of That's a preparser thing. It's, yeah. it's yeah. something that I added to the preparser at some That's point. A long it's worked for a while. Yeah, yeah it must and be two or three years of machine loans. is just a year old. Yeah, I mean, so the reason I ask, I mean, because certainly that's an issue with a lot of my worksheets. I thought it was and also I noticed with his, a lot of the times, you know, you get some kind of a, 
you, know, you get some kind of deprecation warning that comes right. in that says, you know, right. uh, we, we no longer accept f of just some number. Please specify the variable. And That's because you were you were doing f equals like x plus y, and then the question is, is right. x or y the first variable? Yeah. Right. So that's well. Why no, we even do if that. you just say f equals x squared, right. they won't like yeah. that either. That's right. That's right. <laughs> for, for reasons that Jason and I disagree. I'm I'm the only one on that one. Well, I mean, I don't mind. It. It's just it just helps me know that I know a better way to change all those things. Right. It's you specify the variables in the order when you do f of x. Yeah. Equals f of x is better. Yeah. Yeah. Or so that's sort of f of x equals three, but I guess that's not sort of yes. Yeah. yeah, I think. One of the things that goes along with right. your presentation is coming up for really good student projects uh, for people to do a vector calculus. And I've used two in the past, which I didn't think about. Of somebody else came up with them. And one is giving uh, code students the code to do a cycloid and then having them generate the code to do an epicycloid. Mm -hmm. And another one is, uh, you know, telling them what a saddle is and having them do a monkey saddle and then making a generalized monkey saddle. And the, the monkey saddle they can look up on the web, that's easy enough. The generalized monkey saddle is a little bit tougher and the epicycloid, there's enough variations on that that they'd never be able to look it up. But if they don't get away from the machine and start thinking about the mathematics, they're never going to be able to hack the code and programming. And so my question, I guess, is, um, if anybody else has other interesting projects like this, I'd sure like to hear about them. Right. We should have a collection of worksheets. All right, anything else? Yes, thank God again. Welcome to the glasses, and if you don't want them, just give them back. And, and this business about collecting things, because this, this looks like this getting good worksheets collected and so on, you're going to start running into the same problem we have with 1,000 problems yep. of varying quality and so on. Um, we have 3,000. Hmm? Yeah, we have 3,000 published worksheets. 3,000. So you've already run into this, this thing. Quality varies um, dramatically. Um, I wonder what are the code people, you know, the code the project, the, the, what was it called before that? Um, what? They used to publish pro uh, they publish problems of differential equations and so on, and they're like projects that are used. Um, but, uh, but I wonder if they've got experience with trying to do this kind of thing. Um, you mean Comap? Comap. Comap oh. was. Oh. Code was part of that, yeah. Co Comap and mm. things like that. So Comap has a database of like. Is that where he was getting all his? Well, this is, you know, this is this collection of projects and so on for students. I don't know if it's being used as much anymore as it used to be, but this is a way to, to I used to comb through those things to look for projects in the classes that Michael. I wanted. And, yep. Michael, you're, you're, you, you have the same sort of thing with... UMAP and COMAP, Math that's what I was and trying like to think. Right? And MathDL has the same problem. Right. They have the same problem in a lot of ways. I mean, yeah. is there thing? Frank just started this yeah. Calc 1 thing, right? Well, the yeah, course communities right. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. project, yeah, which is which is I think a good start. I mean, I like that's one of the things I I want to think about or want people to think about is if if we establish course communities around specific courses, how do we then sort of curate these materials into right. the <clears throat> sites? I mean, that's one of the goals that that we've had for a long time is to have these course centric communities that really aren't sort of top down because we can't do that. It has to be the people who are interested in it, you know, contributing and doing it like we're talking about here. But as we all know, if it's I, organic, uh, if it's <laughs> organic, you have that there's this different quality levels and you don't it's it's really difficult to yeah, it might be nice to have some way to collect these things and tend to have some sort of reviewing process. MathDL has sort of the, the most advanced infrastructure maybe to do In terms of like reviewing this. in particular, Jonathan has a... I, I comment from another field. Field, right. Um, right. Um, sure. We do have some of the same issues. Uh, in, yeah, in, in chemistry, right. one of the things is I'm, I'm a member of the Chemistry Committee on Computers and Chemical Education. And what happens is the way, the way you can get people 
at least academics to do some of this stuff is you, you have, under the umbrella of your association, you have committees that are these responsibilities. You get people appointed to it because that counts for service. That counts for academic credit at most schools. And literally, if you're, I would set up. That's what you pay people. You, yeah, you, you, don't, you don't actually pay them, but you, give, you put them on something where they got selected to do it. So you, for, you, know, you form a committee, you know, here's the calculus committee, and it's probably some, have some mechanism of rotating people through and having a chair, and it's their job to meet X number of times a year and curate the calculus. The, the current collection. The current collection. That's, that's a good idea. And then it, be, it becomes the duty of, the, so now your society, you know, has to have put some money towards having the infrastructure for it, but but that's basically how we've managed it in chemistry. The other place that this is happening is through the NSF NDSL. Everybody know what that is? The digital the Which science. Right. NDSL well, is part of the NSF. Right. NSL, they were so that's the other place. But again, you really need to have the society sort of oversee it. Right now, for chemistry, it's sort of through one group my, my at Madison, and it's. NDSL hasn't been doing this much recently. Well, they're they're pretty much going to discontinue the kind of support they have had for a lot of years. And part of the problem is what they envisioned for the science digital libraries was partly the curation and partly the searchability and so forth. But they were overtaken by reality, right? I mean, you could, there was not the capacity within the scientific communities to keep up with, say, Google and the other large search engines and those kinds of things. And I think what we have, to, one of the things we have to recognize is what are the things which we have to do because they're essentially internal to our discipline, and what are the things that we can leverage that are those being done out there by the big, I mean, just just to drive the point home, this is a, this is a story I'll tell. The, the MAA has an annual operating budget of roughly ten million dollars. That's very small, by the way, smaller than any of your institutions and many of your departments, probably, but are certainly colleges. Google, in 2008, paid $3.2 billion for AdSense so they could tweak their ability to place online ads. That's over, <laughs> over 300 times the amount of money that we spend in a year, they spend just to tweak a certain algorithm that makes them money. All right, so that's that scale issue, sort of, you know, it's sort of um, sobering to think about that. So, what are the things we can do, and what are the things we, sh what are the things we have to do, what are the things we shouldn't do? That's one of the questions we have to ask. So, what are the platforms? How do we avoid trying to reinvent search mechanisms and so forth? And how do we make sure that we're focusing our energy on doing the things that we have to do because that's where, because nobody else can do it. Or partnering. Where, and where do the part, partner, where, where do the right partners and how we do this? And you're talking about the committees. We, we definitely have some of that in place already and we've talked about expanding that. But I'm interested, from your point of view, those, those course centric collections or whatever, one of the problems is getting people you know, if you build it, will they come? And do you know what sort of traffic, uh, what sort of take up? They you? have to be. They have to be valuable. Well, so if more I, than that, it has to be valuable enough to take the time to learn how to use those resources, yeah. and to have people value the time at your institution that you spend getting to learn how to use those resources. So, for All example, right, so something that failed miserably in chemistry were Mathematica. Maple worksheets for use in the, our advanced courses. Like PCAM or something. Courses because, yeah, some campuses had one thing, some campuses had others, and that basically they were being put up and they were static because they, they weren't getting updated. And this is the advantage of some of the things attached to something like SAGE. I can get SAGE. My students can get SAGE. So and one of the important things I think I've learned dealing with issues is that you should not be tagged for, for, for academic institutions, the resources they need to use a tool 
have to be something that an individual instructor can just go out and get, which means it basically has to be open source. That's a key for me. That's one of the reasons I'm doing the same stuff. Uh, we, my campus buys Maple, has, a, has Maple licenses, but my students can't use it. And so I just started using Sage in my classes for the mathematical stuff. So it needs every, all the pieces need to be publicly accessible. It can't be a, you know, well, here's a tool you can use and plug into XYZ. It just doesn't work because too few institutions have overlap in what they have resources to support. I just want to say I was part of this course communities thing with Lang when the Calculus One course. And so this issue of metadata and tagging is very important to them. And I think it's something that, that would be uh, an interesting place where uh, both the WebWork project, the Sage project, and that course communities project um, can kind of collaborate and do the same thing. It might be pretty useful. They started with this Devil in Core metadata initiative, which uh, you know has this format for specifying metadata. Um, and then stall to some extent. It did stall, stall for some extent, and but they also, you know, then developed categories. I don't know if these were Dublin Core uh, areas or if, or if they developed these themselves. They, I don't recall. They, I was part of that. They developed them individually, and uh, you know, unfortunately, developing categories in abstract is really hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's but organic tagging, right? Well, it's it's hard to tell. I mean, they, they each have advantages and disadvantages. But it wasn't actually. It's so not as easy as one would think, though. Oh well, we'll just sit down and write out the categories, you know, and use the. You know. Go ahead. But well, I was just going to say it's an iterative process, and it wasn't. It wasn't. That's uh, true. It wasn't an abstract. I mean, they had applets and resources that they were looking at, and it's a starting point. So I mean, I think it would be a reasonable starting point for. Um, you know, we have this problem with tagging web work problems, and. Just as an example, though, I tried to use that. Tried to convince the rest of the web work people to use that category at a time, uh, those categories for web work, and uh, it didn't fly because it had been invented here. I guess I don't know. It's hard to yeah. try, again. try again. Right. Yeah, talk about this. I have a, I, I have a feeling that the the rating system is not very well used, right? Because right. right now you can rate a worksheet, right? For some reason, it's not so as popular as yep. like Yelp, right? I mean, I, I would imagine that it would be nice to have a something, something like Yelp. I, I guess maybe I didn't pronounce it right. Yelp. Like if you look for so. restaurant, right? Like. Yeah. 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 If you look for yeah. restaurant, yeah. you just minus usually minus go to that, yeah. and then that will solve some right. issue of like. Right. Naturally, the the quality will be different, right? But if you say this is four star, right? By yeah. 1,005 people, then maybe this worksheet, I will spend more time to look into it. That often one was just four, three, and two. That always like for the numbers not to be numerical for the categories, but to be like sure two is like it works. Like three is like a oh, lie. Yeah. Four is like really like. So maybe, maybe the like interface is not that friendly. Yeah. Netflix, they actually tell you what the numbers mean, right? But, but if, you, if you just had those words there, then you could, you could, you could have an idea of what you, what you meant. And it would, it, it would be the same as writing <laughs> 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Who would either use the Netflix algorithm? So, if you like this, you can dislike it. Yeah, I'll be choosing search engines. All right, I think I'm going to bring the discussion to a close. After Jonathan gets one more time. Yes, after I get one. I thought, on the, yeah, I thought on the rating, I realized that I've never rated anything I've, down, I've used simply because I usually download it and play with it. Yeah. And then I'd have to go back and find it and rate it. So maybe we've got an issue of, of the interface more than anything else. I'm not sure how you solve that. That's a simple repository. If you want your worksheet rated, then you put it there. But, but again, I, but I'm going to download it and, oh, this works great. I'm going to use it in my class. Do I remember to go back and rate it? No, no. When you rate it, it would go back and submit that result. Ah, you're base. saying that yeah. so a worksheet, oh. where so every worksheet library. will have a rating system and build into say, you know, say you do a rating and it sends it back to the central repository. Yeah, yeah. That might work, so that you don't have to. So, so even a worksheet I make on my own machine. Uh, no, I guess it would have to be published at. Yeah. at yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't have the information of what. Right. Point back to. Right. Okay, I think we can have a lot of great discussions over lunch. But we need to get to lunch first. So let's uh, take a break.
And we'll, we'll start at uh, 15 after one more talk, and then we'll have lunch. After that. Thanks for talking. And I'm off to do some programming, but I have.